Hi, my name is Harsh, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the AWS Replicator extension by LocalStack. LocalStack is a cloud service emulator that allows you to create various cloud resources on your local machine using emulated services like S3, SQS, SNS, and more of that. With the help of the Replicator extension, you can mirror the remote cloud resources on your local machine at the API level and use them alongside the local resources that has been provisioned by LocalStack. Back in 2022, we released the first version of LocalStack extensions that pretty much allows you to extend your LocalStack experience. With the help of the LocalStack extension, you can write Python application that runs alongside your LocalStack container lifecycle. Replicator extension opens up a wide variety of use cases because now you can basically leverage the remote plus local development experience, or you can have remote resources such as your SQS queues or DynamoDB tables or SSM parameters sitting right on the real cloud service. And with the help of local stack, you can pull them down on your local machine and use them alongside your local resources. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use the replicator extension. And for this particular example, I will be using a very simple Lambda function that is invoked by an SQS queue with an event source mapping in place. I will have my Lambda function running pretty much on my local machine, but I will have two SQS queues, one of them running on my local machine, while the other would be running on the AWS cloud itself. And I'll show you how you can invoke the la local Lambda function with the help of the remote SQS queue itself. So without much talking, let's jump right uh, into the technical demonstration. The AWS Replicator extension allows you to replicate AWS resources into your local machine. Before you install the AWS Replicator extension, make sure that you have your local stack Docker container up and running on your local machine. In this case, I'm using the local stack CLI to start my local stack Docker container. I have also passed some additional configuration variables, such as the extra course allowed origins that basically allows my replicator extension user interface to connect to my running Docker container. And also debug is equals one, which enables more verbose logs. This is quite useful when we actually invoke our Lambda function, because that would enable us to trace down the debug output right into our local stack logs. Once set up, you can navigate back to the local stack web app and you can check out the AWS Replicator tab on this extensions library. The extensions library provides an intuitive user interface that allows you to install and manage your local stack extensions with just the click of a button. To install the Replicator extension, go ahead and click on Install on Instance, and you can choose the default instance, which is always the instance that's running on your local machine. Once done, you can go ahead and click on this install button, and this will start the process of installing the AWS Replicator extension on your local machine. This process might take a few seconds because at the end, it installs a Python package. And most of the local stack extensions are basically bundled and shipped as Python packages itself. You might be able to notice that the extension installation is almost complete. And this process always restarts your local stack Docker container. So you can actually go back and you can see the whole process starting up once again. And you can also go ahead and check out the extension CLI that would basically allow you to list all of the local stack extensions that has been installed on your local machine. In this case, the AWS Replicator extension is already available. So I can go back to my user interface, maybe just refresh this a bit because this process might hang out a bit. And you can see that the Replicator extension is now set up and available on your local machine. To access the Replicator extension user interface, you can click on this open UI button and this will open up the simplistic user interface that the Replicator extension basically provides. The Replicator extension has got two modes, as you can see over here. The first one is the AWS connection proxy, 
and the second one is the AWS Resource Replicator. The AWS Connection Proxy basically enables you to forward certain API calls in local stack to the real AWS cloud. And this is very much helpful if you want to seamlessly transition between local and remote resources. This is what we are going to show you today. To enable this AWS Connection Proxy, we have to pass our AWS credentials. Just be careful that while you're using the AWS Connection Proxy, never ever give access to your production accounts or any sort of critical or sensitive data. It is also highly recommended to just use read-only credentials that is scoped down to the least set of required permissions. And the warning and the note is pretty much detailed right over here. With that said, we can enter our AWS access key ID and AWS secret access key. In this case, I have already created the access key and the secret access key over here. So I can just blindly copy paste them over here. And these are the least permissive permissions that I have figured out. So you should also be kind of following up on the same instructions. So once these are pasted, the next step is to basically paste down a proxy configuration over here. As I mentioned before, the proxy configuration basically allows you to scope down to the services and to the resources that you basically want local stack have access to. So in this case, I already have a very basic proxy setup, and I can just copy paste that pretty much blindly over in this case, which is this particular thing over here. So I can copy paste this, and this basically instructs that I have this SQS service, and the resource that it should have access to is the test queue AWS that we would be creating uh, later now in the tutorial. I won't click on save configuration for now because there are some local resources that I need to create first. So let us quickly get onto that. In this case, I have a Lambda function and this Lambda function is invoked when we send a message to an SQS queue. And the way that we invoke it is by using an event source mapping, nothing fancy over here, just to showcase you a really simplistic use case. So just to show you how our Lambda function looks like, so we have a simplistic handler function over here that prints a debug output from Lambda function, just something that would make things work out for. Um, once this is set up, we can actually copy paste a bunch of commands that I've already pre-configured over here. So the first command is to zip this particular Lambda function into test lambda.zip file and instruct the Lambda create function API to create a function whose name would be func1. The runtime would be Python 3.8. And we've also specified the IAM role, which is pretty much mocked over here, the handler, the timeout, and the zip file. Once this is done, you can see that our Lambda function has been created successfully. And the next step would be to create the SQS queue. So in this case, I'm creating an SQS queue whose name would be test queue AWS. So I can go ahead, click enter, and this would create my SQS queue right over here. Once this process is complete, now I can create an event source mapping between the Lambda function that I created before and the SQS queue that I have created just right now. So I can click enter, and this would basically create the event source mapping that would basically enable any message sent to my SQS queue to basically invoke the local Lambda function that I have over here. Once this is done, I can trigger or basically invoke my Lambda function by just sending an SQS message. And the way that I would do that is using the AWS CLI. And almost instantaneously, you will notice that local stack invokes your Lambda function. And if I just go ahead and maybe search for the debug output, you can see that it's pretty much available right over here. So you can see the debug output from Lambda function, which basically validates that our Lambda function has been invoked once we send a message to the SQS queue. With this process now complete, now is the time when real fun begins. Now is the time when we actually leverage the replicator extension in its true form. So go back to the replicator extension user interface and just go ahead and click on save configuration. This will basically start the local stack proxy container and 
the replicator extension UI will basically pass on the AWS credentials to this particular container that we will spin up. And you will soon notice that the proxy status is now enabled, which means that now we can use the same set of remote resources that we have on the real AWS cloud back onto our local machine. So in this case, what I can do is that I can create an SQS queue. And this time I'm creating this on the real AWS cloud, not onto my local stack uh, Docker setup. So my SQS queue is properly set up now. And if I actually go back, I can navigate to the SQS queue interface on the AWS management console. I can hit refresh and you will soon notice that we have this test queue AWS available right over here. With that said, I guess I can just hit clear for all of my container logs over here. And maybe I can just go back to my SQS uh, management console, click on send and receive messages. And this time I can enter a message over here. So maybe the message can be like, hello from AWS. And as soon as I hit send message, the event source mapping that we have configured on our local stack setup will basically trigger. And you can notice that our Lambda function, which is pretty much still on our local machine has been invoked. You can see the hello from AWS over here. And if you actually search for the debug output once again, you can see that it's available uh, on our local stack container logs. Please ensure that if you're not able to see this, uh, just make sure that debug equals one is available on our container logs. So this is how the replicator extension basically enables you to mirror your AWS cloud resources onto your local machine itself. There are more use cases that are possible with the replicator extension. And to learn more about them, you can navigate uh, to the Python package index page that we have available over here. And this will detail not just the AWS connection uh, proxy that we have showed you by the user interface. You can use a similar setup using the local stack CLI as well. You can also go ahead and use resource specific proxy. And this opens up a lot of use cases for you for basically a seamless remote plus local development experience. So this was it about the technical demonstration. With the help of the AWS Replicator extension, you can further extend your local development setup to also accommodate the remote cloud resources. A lot of people colloquially call this as a REM local experience, basically combining all of the benefits of the remote cloud plus the local development. Local stack extension has a lot of different use cases as well. For example, in the past few months, we have shipped a variety of new extension, some of which you can find on the extensions library. For example, we have shipped an initial experimental version of the Snowflake extension that allows you to create Snowflake data pipelines pretty much on your local machine. If you want to explore more of such use cases, do check out the local stack extension GitHub repository and feel free to create an issue with your particular use case that we can have a look at. If you want to try out the AWS Replicator extension, you can find the same tutorial linked down below in the description. So definitely go ahead and check that out. So this was it for the video, and I hope I would be able to see you in the next one. Have a good day, folks.